Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your genre jumping host, Tony. Tony B. Hey, how's it going out there? It is me, Tony B, and we're glad to be joining you again for episode number 78. We just keep whittling these off, like buying albums at the store, and next thing you know, we'll have like 500, and we won't know where to put them. But uh, until we get to then, uh, we're glad that you have joined us. Uh, it's hot out there. It's hot. It's crazy, and the only thing that kind of sometimes tune down that temperature is to get some, or tune it up, is to uh, get some good tunes going, and that's exactly what we have for you on uh, the week, the, the week of July 15th, you know, can you believe it? We're already at uh, this uh, middle point of July, and uh, boy, are we having a good time. There are concerts, concerts about awesome summer festivals there's just lots of stuff going on barbecues can't get too much of that barbecue chicken but uh that being said we're just glad that you're here tonight or today or whenever you happen to be listening because uh we got some some goodies here for you and uh we're glad to be sharing them so let's 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 us get started and also wanted to let you know uh, starting next week, we are going to uh, start uh, having some guests and bringing them back into the fold. Um, so please look out for that. It's going to be a really, really good time. Um, this week, there was a few new releases that we're going to cover on two two hugely different genres. Um, number one up was uh, The Death of Slim Shady. That was what we're going to cover here first. Um, an album that uh, was the 12th studio album by Eminem. Can't believe it. The 12th studio album um, by Eminem. Um, when, that, when you start to say when an artist and you start to say numbers pass like the sixth or the seventh and they're still putting them out and people are still excited when they're coming out, you got to turn your head and say, you know, this Eminem, you know, he uh, put some, put some, put some, put some things together. You know, um, I came into the picture on the second um, album, the Slim Shady LP. I actually saw him in 1999 on the Warp Tour Festival. Would not expect to be seeing uh, Eminem mixed in with a bunch of awesome punk rock bands, but there he was. Did a really, really great show. But uh, here we are. You know, we're here on the uh, 12th album. Um, an album that uh, has lots and lots and lots of, uh, well, frequent collaborators from um, Big Sean and Baby Tron and Jelly Roll. Yeah, he does a, a song with Jelly Roll, um, who also has a song in the new Twisters soundtrack that uh, we'll uh, might talk about sometime later if it's would seems deemed worthy. Um, also, uh, frequent collaborators, uh, Dr. Dre and Louis Resto. Um, was produced by uh, Eminem um, with those two, along with Dem Joins, Fred Rick, Q Beats, Cole Bennett, and DJ Premier. Um, how long is this album? 64 minutes and 28 seconds. How is it? You know, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit over here, a little bit over there. Um, you know, I, some of it's a little much, if that could be said. But uh, he's always been a little much, but maybe it's just the sign of the times. I don't know. Um, I wasn't into the album as much as uh, maybe some of his past albums. You know, his very, uh, you know, his song Houdini that came out uh, was all right. Nothing too special. Um, but if you're a fan of Eminem, I'm pretty sure you're going to dig into this album and you're going to dig it quite a bit. Um, also coming out with a brand new um, album um, uh, is uh, the one and the only, um, well, Johnny Blue Skies. And you're saying, well, like, who's Johnny Blue Skies? It is uh, the alter ego of Sturgill Simpson. You know, just a great, great artist. Uh, me personally, I came across Sturgill Simpson um, on the, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well where did i come across him high top mountain was a really good uh, debut from him but sound and fury is where i uh, came across him for the very first time and honestly he uh really good album that was you know that was that was that was you know 2019 so we're saying five years later you know we're curious to see what this this man has been up to um since that sound and fury album he's come out with a couple volumes of cutting grass and the battle of the dude in juanita so now uh passage do desire um 
is pretty uh it's pretty awesome um it is is definitely receiving lots and lots of uh praise by music fans um some people say that it scratches a lot of the same itches of artists that you may have listened to a long time ago like kind of like when the birds did their got crossover stuff some Graham parsons um maybe a little band maybe even a little omen brothers but uh definitely 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 what i like is that uh it's a good album okay it's a good album and it's clocking at 41 minutes and 43 seconds but only eight songs on the album swamp of sadness kicks it off um what i like about this is there's a couple songs that are past the seven minute mark uh Jupiter's Ferry is 7 minutes and 24 uh, seconds, and One for the Road is 8 minutes and 55 seconds. Um, the album was produced by David R. Ferguson with um, Sturgill Simpson. Um, pretty cool. Um, David R. Ferguson's been part of a lot of different things. Um, been part of U2, Rattle and Hum, Tyler Childers, Del McCurry Band. Um, very, very cool. John Prine. Always going to never get a little too much of John Prine. But uh, just a really good album that I suggest you check out. Passage du Desire. Passage of Desire, in, uh, which is what the first thing I said was, was French. Um, but uh, this wanted to, he said, show a new phase in his career. Um, um, this is a little bit of what he said when he moved to Paris. There's a con contrarian in me that always wants to push against any kind of expectation. If something works, there's a thought in my brain like, no, I'm being told to do that again. I was in pain. I was pushing the world away. Um, that's why he adapted the stage name. And that's why we got this awesome, awesome album that I really suggest that you uh, dig into. Because honestly, the vocals, the guitar, the pedal steel, a really, really great um, the miking on this album is is really, really, really good. There's a dark undercurrents that are going on that you just can't miss. Um Dark Passages, which are definitely cool if you are a fan of Sturgill Simpson because, honestly, he does that really, really well. And honestly, out of the two albums that uh, we reviewed here, I would take this one over The Death of Slim Shady. Um, I know they're completely different albums, and I know this is a little bit more, uh, you know, they call it Americana, but I think it's a little bit more than that. So uh, check out this new, uh, well, it's called... Uh, johnny blue skies but uh it's sturgill simpson so check it out it's good it's good stuff good stuff good stuff good stuff that we are spinning uh just like what we got here for you now we are going to continue down the path of amazing guitar players with a little slim harpo come inside i'm young and ain't slim harpo all right, born James Isaac Moore. Um, he was alive from 1924 to 1970, sadly passing away at the age of 46. Um, but that song, I'm a King Bee from 1957, definitely, definitely, definitely sticks and uh, it, it crawls in my brain. And you may say, why does that song crawl in your brain? Because honestly, I wouldn't have known about this uh, song and a lot of blues songs because I, I started listening to the Blues Brothers um, and really listening to the music itself. And uh, they introduced me to uh, one Slim Harpo. So thank you, uh, Jake and Elroy, for introducing me to to the man who was born in Lobdell, uh, Louisiana. He was the eldest child of the family. Um, he worked as a longshoreman, okay? His influence was in the style of Jimmy Reed, and he began performing in Baton Rouge, okay? Um, he used the name Harmonica Slim to get started. Um, his brother-in-law was Lightning Slim in live performances, which is kind of cool, those names. Um, just really, really, really cool that uh, also, this is a really interesting back, the, back to the uh, progressive rock, uh, British rock band, uh, the Moody Blues, took it from Slim Song Moody Blues. So that's kind of cool. Um, just really a lot of influence. Again, another musician who has a lot of influence. You know, influencing, again, I brought up uh, Rolling Stones, Yardbirds, Kinks, Dave Edmonds, Love Sculpture, Van Morrison, uh, when he was with them. Just Hank Williams Jr., uh, Fabulous Thunderbirds, Warren Smith. A lot, a lot, a lot of influences. Um, a really, a lot of, just a really, really cool guitar player. Okay, we've talked about the Kings. Okay, we've talked, we've been... We've been uh, just, 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 just chugging along here on, on on really, really cool, cool guitar players. And Slim Harpo is another one that definitely needs to be uh, 
for you to uh, be uh, looked at. But that I'm a king bee is really, really, really awesome. Um, um, it, it's 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 again 1957. Okay, um, a swamp blues, just just really swampy song. Muddy Waters has got uh, a, a, a a great a great cover of it. Um, just the Stones have got a great cover. It, uh, you may not even believe this. A really awesome um, Grateful Dead version with a pig pen, the keyboard player, original keyboard player uh, doing it. Uh, Pink Floyd's got a version. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, on, uh, John Belushi did a performance on McKing Bee dressed as a BN Saturday Night Live. So um, just a really, really awesome all-around uh, player is that, uh, you know, is um slim harpo i mean really really cool um really smooth as you can see on the screen his guitar um real beautiful uh sunburst gibson just just beautiful 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 uh player and um his influence is is, is huge okay um sadly dying um of a heart attack just 20 days after his 46th birthday um if you ever make it out to port allen louisiana you could find him buried in the mulatto ben cemetery that would be a really cool thing to go out there and 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 really 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 uh dig into um he had a really huge commercial success in 66 with his uh predominantly instrumental baby scratch my back um always need our back scratched by our baby according to slim harpo um he's got also a lot of great great tracks you know he did a cover of Folsom prison bruise shake your hips still raining in my heart buzz me babe you're looking for more uh, albums. Uh, a long drink of blues from '64 is great. Tip on in from '68, um, but definitely, 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 if you haven't heard any of them, get started with that King B uh, that you did hear right there because uh, definitely is uh, one of my favorites. You know, I think I've listened to him just as much as I've listened to um, the other the other guitar players that we've talked about in the past week. So uh, listen into some Slim Harpo and let us know, um, please. You know, um, that's why we love doing this. We love, uh, we love, we love sharing this stuff with you because, uh, honestly, well, what else are we going to do? You know, we love talking music. That's why we're here. Um, let's continue down the path of funk with a band that honestly, um, last week we talked about the gap band. I cannot get enough of cool in the gang. Cool and Gang are just loaded, 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 loaded with hits that honestly, if you are not feeling very well, uh definitely are going to cure that in a second we're going to get to where i got my start listening to them but uh, before we do that let's go a little bit on the band started in 1964 still playing today <clears throat> just really again lots of good songs hollywood swinging okay ladies night celebration get down on it joanna misled cherish um Definitely, definitely um, was cool. It was in 2012 they supported Van Halen um, on their uh, on their tour and their 50th anniversary tour. Just thought that was incredible that you're getting this great, great band. Honestly, um, you're not feeling up to it. You're not feeling like you're in the mood. You, this song "Fresh" will definitely get you going. <laughs> Honestly. I suggest you go back and you uh, take some time and you look at these outfits that they're all wearing and you can see just how cool, um, you know, the band really, 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 really was back then. Um, we'll tell you about some of the main players here. Robert Cool Bell is on bass. Um, he's been in the band since 64 all the way. Okay. Uh, Dennis DTT -T -T, uh, Thomas was the alto sax. He sadly died. Um, Clay, Clay's Charles Smith, he was on guitar. Man, that guitar in some of these songs, great, 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 as is Ronald Bell on tenor saxophone. Um, when they had a lot of their huge uh, vocal and their huge success, um, James J.T. Taylor was on vocals, and he was in the band from 79 to 88. He was on that track Fresh there. He, they got a song, Misled. Uh, the guitar riff on Misled is just really, 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 really cool. Um you know, before he joined the band, they were some straight up, straight up, real funky, harder, tighter, uh, you know, just a real funky unit. Okay. Um, putting out together just, just jam after jam after jam. Um, their greatest hits albums uh have to be a two disc because 
you, just a lot of songs. Um, but uh, what I thought it was uh, cool was that they were originally called Cool in the Flames, but uh, they originally were told uh, don't 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 use that name because uh, James Brown band, uh, the Famous Flames, you could get a little bit maybe misconstrued or mis uh, convinced by them, but uh, definitely Cool in the Gang was a great name. Um, cool in the Gang's emergency. If you're watching on um, the YouTube and listening live, the cover of this album, I remember picking this up in the collection downstairs growing up, seeing flames and fire, and just knowing that the songs on these these albums would just be so awesome, especially in the summer. Um, you're going to catch me a lot of times dancing, which is great. Uh, cool in the gang um, provide that um, I would have liked to have been around, which I say a lot in the late seventies, uh, early eighties. Because honestly, I would have been ba banging my head. I would have been like just doing everything, dancing, banging my head. I would have been just like a, all over the place. Kind of like that's what the music is that uh, we cover on here. Just a little bit of all over the place. Um, but what I thought was even more cooler was uh, just this past week. Um, the reason that brought me up to do all of this was that uh, if you have a chance, go on the sadisticpenguinstudios.com. Um, we're, we're all typing out articles that are down there really awesome on movies, great movies. But I I, I did um, one on music. There's, food, there's a whole bunch of stuff down there. Just check it out. But I did one on the Pulp Fiction soundtrack. And honestly, you talk about a soundtrack that's great from head to toe. But the reason I bring this up is Cool and King's Jungle Boogie. That's kind of where I got my start and who this – who where this great band and they're a little bit different band than fresh so like i said a really hard edged uh real hard edged sound but uh again really really great stuff on this soundtrack um what i've been really jamming to is bullwinkle part two about the centurions the song is smooth like butter and it really makes me want to go out driving with like a t-top or something just really really great uh, cool names too busting surfboards by the tornadoes that's a great name um comanche by the revels always will be remembered by its iconic scene um, a lot of good surf music on this um as is girl you'll be a woman soon not surf music but a great neil diamond cover just really good chuck berry great guitar player you can never tell al green um doing that just just great great stuff um but i thought i should add all of that because i wrote this amazing article so check that out but uh let's move on to our next uh segment here um earlier today uh my amazing partner at, at the show, um, Yumper, he shared a, a, a great, 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 great track by the band Foreigner. And boy, am I familiar with Foreigner because they were uh, formed in New York City in 1976, okay, by guitarist Mick Jones, vocalist Lou Graham, drummer Dennis Elliott, uh, keyboardist Al Greenwood, bassist Ed Gagliardi, and multi instruments uh, Ian McDonald, okay, one of the World's best-selling bands of all time with 80 million records, including 37 point million in the U.S. So half of their sales are just in the U.S. alone. But great, great albums. Great. I mean, you know the singles. You know the feels like the first time. Cold as ice. Um, Double vision. Um, great, 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 great. Hot blooded. Head games. Um, urgent. Uh, jukebox hero. Waiting for a girl like you. Um, love. Honestly, I'm not afraid to admit I love the ballad. I, I want to know what love is. Um, just a really, really, really good band that just really had a really, really good sound for the time of when they were coming out. Great vocalist, um, you know, uh, in, um, in Lou Graham and, and excellent guitar playing and, and Mick Jones. Just really, really, really great. Uh, just here's a really cool kind of clip of them in the later years, just Mick and Lou jamming on a classic. Yeah. Feels like the first time, um, I can remember the first time listening to these guys. Uh, my mom, she had a Greatest Hits album, and I would just kind of listen to it and keep listening to these songs. I play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot on the radio. But honestly, what I like to do to find out if a band is really, really, really good is I go, hey, you know what? Let's dig a little deeper. You know, so let's see some of the deep cuts. Um, on the debut album, there's a couple, a couple great uh, deep cuts. Head Knocker, Star Rider. Um, last track, I Need You, um, really, really awesome, awesome track, really great, um, Double Vision, another great album, um, Blue Morning, Blue Day, uh, you, you do play that one on the radio a lot, but really, really great one off that, um, Head Games, 
good stuff on head games. Um, Rev on the red line. I'll never forget when my dad said that was a great one to go out racing with. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. Um, Foreigner is never, um, just never ashamed to play Foreigner. Um, just a really great band. That's the shame that uh, the original band isn't together <clears throat> anymore. I had an opportunity to see Foreigner, who they are now, and honestly, great, great show. Um, I think they are on there wrapping up. Um, they're wrapping up their their who they are as a band, um, supposedly. Um, but uh, they're uh, you know, that's this is this is their uh, this is you can't go on forever, okay. Uh, Mick Jones, I think, is, has some health issues, which is a little, uh, you know, he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Um, so this is kind of like a farewell tour. So if you get a chance, go out there and see Foreigner, play Foreigner, blast Foreigner. Um, again, you know, I think even Lou Graham goes out there and tours around. Check check him out. You know, it won't it won't it won't it won't hurt you. Here's a little red man. Um, I was thinking that movie How High with him and. Um, Method Man, um, it, it, in the film world, but it, in the rap world, Red Man, uh, born Reginald Noble, is a little bit more than that. Uh, where I got my start uh, with him was his fourth album, Doc's the Name, um, released in 1998. Um, the song "I'll Be Dat," that was the song that really, really, that was my introduction to Mr. Red Man. Yeah, I'll be dat. My first name must be he ain't shit. Every time I'm in a car, bitches be like, he ain't. Sh- Gotta switch it up around here. So, you know, I decided, you know what? Let's talk about this one. Uh, Debut at number 11 on the Billboard Top 200, but number one on the hip-hop album. So, again, um, people liked it. People listened to it. It's uh, certified platinum, okay? So, again, produced by Eric Sermon. Um, The Goodness was another second-grade song. But, again, I picked this album out. Let the Monkey Out. Great, great song. Welcome to the Bricks. Um, I like the little interludes. Again, another one with great little interludes. Uh, Million Chicken. Um, just really good. Keep on 99. Um, it's funny. It's because uh, I'm thinking about the song Dogs, track 19. Um, you used to love. I mean, 24 tracks. Okay? 24 tracks. 70 minutes long. You're not going to want to miss out on listening if you're looking for something in the uh, hip-hop variety. Um, Check it out. Check out this album. It's really good. Doc's the name. Um, really good. Just like check out Fear Factory's Obsolete. Um, Fear Factory at touring again. They got a new singer, another band with another new singer, but it doesn't ever hurt to go back and check out an old classic. Uh, probably my favorite from the band, even though Demanufacture is really awesome. But uh, so is Soul of a New Machine. Um, Digimortal has got some good stuff on it, but after that, you're in some possible not the best territory. New stuff. Supposedly could be really good. Um, earlier today, I posted a cover of Cars, just excellent Gary Newman cover that Fear Factory added after the fact that they released the album. Sold a couple more copies that way. Um, it was also the band's first to feature bassist Christian Old Walbers, which is crazy because I thought he had been in the band uh, forever. Um, 48 minutes and 59 seconds. Okay. Um, uh, definitely saw them in the summer of 97. So then they went into the studio in late 97 and then made this album. Okay. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely it's up there. Dino Gazares is a great guitar player. Um, great seven string tuned down guitar. Um, great, 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 great stuff. Uh, earlier today, I was actually cutting the lawn and we listened to this album. Smasher Devour track three is great. Getting off with shock. If you got some kind of bass, Really, really awesome title track. Um, um, High Tech Hate, um, Securiton, Police Day 2000. Great, great track. Um, another awesome, awesome album by uh, just a great uh, metal band that doesn't get talked about enough. Um, I don't know why Fear Factory doesn't get talked about a lot with like in in the world words of um, you know your, your your Panteras and your Slayers, but they got really good stuff. And honestly. You know, maybe even a little bit more in the industrial uh, vein, but just really, really good and, and worth worth your time to check out if you really get get the opportunity to, to do that. Uh, Fear Factory is just a really, really great band. Um, really, really great band. Uh, Billy Idol, Eyes Without a Face. Ooh, this is a great one. This is one of those that I'm just going to tell you that if you're out there and it's hot and steamy and you're on the beach and you're looking for something in the 80s to just kind of get you going, um, make you get a lot of cool visuals, 
uh, Billy Idol, Eyes Without a Face is just a great, great, um, just a great, 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 great song, great lyrics, um, just excellent, excellent lyrics. Um, I like just the way, uh, uh just the song its development um you know with the line believing all the lies keep the dream alive now it makes me sad it makes me mad at truth for loving what was you it's just very very interesting you know you go from myself the white weddings and the rebel yells and the dancing with yourself to something a little bit deeper from billy idol uh, put it on your mixtape um a really good one from the 80s that uh, definitely deserves uh, the spin um and again, check out that Pulp Fiction soundtrack. It's really, 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 really good. Which is why we're here to discuss really awesome stuff. This Saturday, the Loserville, which kicked off yesterday, I checked out the set list. Limp Bizkit, Bones, Eddie Baker, Corey Feldman. You're excited to see Corey Feldman. I know you music fans out there have been dying to see Corey Feldman live. He's like the new Grateful Dead. Just, you know, classic Corey, just, just laying it down, Corey Feldman. But uh, no, no, I know you're uh, you're probably, he might be one you might walk in late to. But Limp Bizkit, play a lot of good songs. Um, Wes Borland is a great, great guitar player. Um, playing this Saturday out in Tinley Park, if you happen to get out there and see this show. Um, it seems like it's going to be quite, quite the time. Tickets are, are selling. Um, there is not much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um actually availability i think there's some lawn there might be some seats if you thought if you look uh somewhere here or there um also um coming up this weekend is the pitchfork fast festival um a band that we just really love a lot the black key black house of the black keys black pumas they're playing um going to be really 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 awesome next week uh if you find yourself out at uh out of space uh we've got a really really cool uh threesome going on here uh july 26 courtney barnett with bob mold uh yes yes that bob mold uh the great um bob mold from uh husker do and then we got these sacred souls and saint paul and the broken bones july 27th and we got guster and the lone bellow on july 28th just that'd be a cool one to go out there and see uh any one of those um Fish, of course, is making their annual three-day stop down to uh, the old uh, the old stomping grounds out at. Uh, one day I'll have to sit and tell you a great Ozfest '98 story um, out in the uh, Alpine Valley area. But again, that's where they'll be playing. Um, Vampire Weekend's got a couple shows coming up also next weekend, 26th and 27th. Um, honestly, this would be great. The Pretenders uh, coming to the Chicago Theater never have too much time uh uh n- i never have a time that i cannot not dedicate to uh chrissy hine and the pretenders who are coming in on the 26th uh thompson twins and thomas dolby coming in on the 29th if you want to get your 80s fix uh tedeschi trucks band coming in on the 31st um really 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 cool stuff and then you flip the calendar and right in the beginning of august you got your Lollapalooza and your Lollapalooza after shows um just honestly and then green day at wrigley field august 13th um got a lot of stuff a lot a lot of stuff coming up around the bend a lot of cool concerts uh cage elephant great live show august 14th abbott brothers and trampled by turtles august 18th um pearl jam a couple shows you know is it time have you seen them yet they are playing wrigley field uh might be time to check go out there and check those guys out but um, that being said, just some sh- concerts coming up this month in August, and we'll keep dropping them on you. So keep looking out for that. And please, uh, please drop any kind of albums you'd ever like to talk about. Uh, send me a DM. I'm never too busy. If I don't respond, it's because I'm probably uh, mowing the lawn, which I have to do and do other things, which honestly, I would stop doing those things to answer your thing. That's why I'm asking you to please let me know. But uh, just this past uh, Sunday, we talked amazing Willem Dafoe movies on At The Show, and my soundtrack pick of the week was the great um, soundtrack that came from Hustle and Flow. So go back over on that episode and listen to that whole thing. Real great discussion with me and my main man, Yumper. Really fun time. I really, really love talking movies just as much as I love talking music. So that's really cool that I get to do that. 
Um, please keep checking out everything that's coming on on the channel. We're dropping videos, a great long legs. Um, also jump by drop by Yumper on the channel. Really, really cool. Um, but that being said, I, I just want to thank you again for joining me. Um, thank you for listening to me talk about these bands and artists that uh, you enjoy, I enjoy, you enjoy um, new albums, which we're going to see what we got next week. And um, as I stated, uh, next week we also have a guest and we're going to start getting some more guests and, and pumping that up. And well, thank you so much for joining me. I feel like I've talked the talk and now let's walk the walk to go rock and roll. So everyone out there, have a good week, and we will see you next Wednesday for our 79th episode. So everyone out there, take care, and uh, please, please, please stay cool however you do that, whether it's listening to music, sitting by an air conditioner, just rocking and rolling, whatever that is. Everyone out there, take care. Take care.